everyone, it's Barbara C. Phillips, founder of Nurse Practitioner Business Owner, and I'm back with another business question of the week. And this one is, what kind of a practice can I start? So nurse practitioners will often ask about the different kinds of practices that they can start and to try to get some ideas about what they can do. Now, a majority of nurse practitioners, particularly FNPs, family nurse practitioners, they do, when they step out on their own, start primary care practices or something along those lines. But I often get questions about, well, what else can I do? So I want to address that. But before I do, I want to just talk about some basics here, because I think this is really important. And if you've seen me talk about things like this before, then you might be a little bit familiar with this particular slide, because I do talk about that nurse practitioners can do almost anything. But there are some caveats that you must pay attention to. First of all, it has to be within your scope of practice, and that varies from state to state. In most cases, it will be dependent on the level of certification that you have. So if you are a pediatric nurse practitioner, you're not going to be doing internal medicine. And if you are a women's health nurse practitioner, you're not really supposed to be doing men, taking care of men, that is. So you really need to be taking a look at what is your scope of practice and what does it entail? The other thing that I'm really big on is even if it's not in your scope of practice, but you're not trained in something, go get the education and then add it to your practice. But don't be doing something that you shouldn't. So first of all, look at your certifications, your certifications and your credentials and what you're doing. It all has to jive. Look and make sure that you understand whatever rules and regulations are in your state regarding scope of practice. The other thing for any business is that you want to get paid for your services. So a lot of times I get questions about some wonderful sounding business ideas that nurse practitioners have, but then I start asking, well, how are you going to get paid for this? And so you need to make sure that you have the ability to get paid for your services, whether it's a fee for service, it's a contract that you have with someone, whether you're billing insurance companies, whatever it may be, you want to make sure that you're getting paid for it. And please make it legal. I, that's a no brainer, right? Unfortunately, we see in the news too often these days of physicians, nurse practitioners, PAs, other healthcare providers who are getting caught up on things that they shouldn't be getting caught up on. You know, whether it's kickbacks or illegal prescribing or prescribing without medical necessity, you know, Medicare fraud, healthcare fraud, I mean, just all kinds of things. So please don't go do anything unless you're going to make sure that it's legal. And if it's not, well, then you shouldn't be doing this kind of work. It also has to be ethical. And so when I say that, what I mean again is, are you doing something? Are you marketing something, a product, a service that is ethical? Do we have evidence to back up what we're doing? Or are we doing something that somebody told us just sounds like it was a good idea at the time and that we could make a lot of money with it? You got to be careful on people that are telling you this kind of stuff. So just make sure that you are doing the right thing. And most of us have been doing this long enough as a nurse, as a nurse practitioner, ever before we go out and do our own business, that you just need to listen to your gut and you'll know what is the right thing to do. So with that all said, what can we do and what are some ideas? There's no shortage of ideas. Obviously, clinical practices, you know, that's what we're all trained for. So we have the primary care practices and perhaps our primary care practice is going to specialize in a certain area. So maybe I'm going to provide primary care um, to adults or to women or to men or to children or to geriatrics or to whatever. We will find different ways of doing that. Perhaps I hold some kind of a specialty and maybe I have advanced certification in diabetes. So my practice is going to focus on a person with diabetes or GI problems or ortho problems or even pain management. 
So again, there's no shortage of different kinds of things that you can do. And you can take each and every one of those clinical practices and offer it in different locations. It could be a mobile practice. It could be a healthcare practice. It could be a practice where you're taking it to that person's work or to that person's community. Perhaps you're going to go see people in long-term care or assisted living. Perhaps you're going to open up a school-based practice. You know, whatever it is, there's really no shortage in how you decide you're gonna go ahead and do this kind of a practice. So what about educational businesses? We have a lot of them out there. We are all very familiar with them. We know that we will take continuing education and there's various companies that offer continuing education for us. There are companies that will offer us board certification. We have companies that will offer us education in doing procedures. We have companies that will offer how to do business, that's me. So there's a lot of different things out there that you can do on the educational realm, but you don't have to stop with educating other clinicians. You could be educating families. You can be educating students. You could be teaching teachers how to do a certain thing if they have you know, students that are ill in their class. You could be teaching community-based CPR and first aid. It d depends on anything that you want to do. You can have a consulting business. Okay, that's part of what I do, but perhaps you're gonna to consult to businesses. One nurse practitioner that I worked with, she consults to um, home health agencies that are doing hospice care and that are adding a hospice to their team. We have others that are doing consulting to businesses that want to provide different kinds of services. We have another one that does consulting to companies that want to offer uh, healthcare practices within their businesses themselves right on site. So as you can tell, there's a lot of different ways that you can go. What about retail? Well, what do you mean by retail? Well, there are some NPs that kind of get out of the clinical work altogether. They're focused on health and wellness and they go and perhaps have a health food store or a gym or a medical spa, that kind of thing. So it has the retail component, it has the service component. There's again, no shortage of different things. But what about other things? Well, there are nurse practitioners that write for a living that publish for a living. There are nurse practitioners that create uh, technical information, do um, apps and those kinds of things, or they have programs. One nurse practitioner actually started one of the early health, um, telehealth education, or not telehealth educations, but telehealth platforms out there. So you have a variety of different things that nurse practitioners can do when they're going and starting a business. So again, there's no end of what you can do. However, please remember these things. And it's really worth saying again, make sure that you have the credentials, make sure that you are within scope of practice for your particular state, because the rules change every year and you need to keep up with that. And if you happen to move from one state to another, you better become familiar with the rules and regulations. It's not always easy. I can tell you when I came from Washington, which was full practice, to Missouri, which is a restricted practice, that it took a little while for me to get my head around some of the restrictions um, that were in place that I had never even heard of before. So you really need to make sure that you understand your scope of practice inside and out. You also need to, and I didn't mention this earlier, but I'll say it here and now, if you're planning on starting a business in your state, you better be aware of what the corporate rules and regulations are as far as you as a healthcare person starting a business. And we can talk about that more at another time, but that's another thing that you need to keep in mind. Make sure that it is financially feasible, that you can get paid for your services, that you have enough people that are willing to pay for those services and that it will support whatever financial goals that you do have. Again, it's got to be legal and it's got to be ethical. To me, these are all things that are no-brainers 
and these are deal breakers for me. So they have to be in place. And so I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video. It's been requested a number of times, so I'm glad I finally got it done. If you have any questions that you would like to ask us for another video question, uh, video of the week question, please go ahead and send it to me at bit.ly forward slash npquest or send me an email at mpbohelp at gmail.com. I appreciate you liking, sharing, and subscribing to this video and so that we can spread the word and that more nurse practitioners and others can watch our videos. So thank you so very much. And until next time, have a great week and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.